everyone is about the national career. And I can see you're very passionate about that project. But I must tell you that a lot of Nigerians are not impressed yet because all we can see is the logo launch with Confer like last year. Last year you asked for, uh, for the working capital. Working capital for the establishment of a national career. For 2020, 2.2 .2 billion was allocated, was uh, budgeted for it. Then this year you're asking for 1 billion. Can you explain what you really mean by the working capital? Because I definitely know it's not to buy airplanes. So can you explain what this billion year in year out is for when it comes to as we are working capital? Of four international airports, Lagos, Abuja, Kano, and Port Harcourt. Last year, 297 million naira was budgeted for it. This year, you are asking for 200 million naira. What kind of consultancy is this that is going to cost half a billion for this concession? Then, not forgetting the national career, you still you still requested for 250 million for the consultancy for the uh, for the national career. Then, the third part is a question I ask all MDs and and ministries. Everybody wants to buy sports kits. I don't know why. Minister of Aviation, you want 20 million to buy sports kits. The fourth part, ICPC Act sensitization. You want to sensitize your members about ICPC. Last year, 5 million naira was budgeted for it. This year, you are asking for 2020, 5 million was budgeted for it. 2021, you are asking for 10 million to sensitize them about the ICPC Act. I don't really get that. Can you explain that? Right? And uh, we've been asking for money in year in year out. Because the project is an ongoing project, because of the importance of a robust national career that is commensurate with the level of travel of Nigerians, commensurate to the size of Nigeria, 200 million people, commensurate to the market in Nigeria, 450 million dollars GDP. Commensurate to the centrality of Nigeria in the ecosystem of transportation of Africa, commensurate to the manpower available to drive the system, the significance and the importance of the carrier in the entire in the entire architecture of single aviation transportation is important. We believe that this country deserves a very, very strong carrier that will tap out of this potential and add value to this economy. I want to draw the attention of the Honorable House that since we came and started to implement this roadmap, we have improved and increased the number of passengers from 8 to 18 million. We've increased um, aircraft movement in and out of the airports. And this could be made much better if we have a well-established, well-structured, private sector-led national carrier. In view of that importance, we've run through the mills, we've run through the stakeholders, we are convinced that it's what we need as a country, as a nation. The activity and the event and the effect of COVID-19 had shown that we do need this. And because of that, we kept it alive. Because it's going to be private sector led, we need a transaction advisor to carry out the transaction advisory services in accordance with the ICRC Act. And because of that, we needed to cater and put in money year in year out for that purpose. But the fact that the money is there in the budget, it does not mean that the budget, but money has either been released or utilized. Oh. Um, since we began this project, to the best that I can remember, on the transaction advisory services and all the activities of the carrier, that I can remember with German, is about, if I'm not mistaken, 350 million now. Now, since budget is an intent of expenditure, since budget is your intention and a statement of intention, we will be very, very, very wrong if we do not make provision for it. And then only for us to come midway and pass to this house and say, oh, sorry, we need to carry out this and we need your approval. And since the budget is a problem of our intention, we have problemed our intention that we will continue with this project. And by the grace of God, I want to assure this house and Nigerians in general that this area will come to be by the grace of God. And it will be for the benefit of our people. Um, concession 
ಅಂದಾಜು ರೂಪಾಯಿ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಅಂತ ಅನ್ನಾಜು ಉಪ್ಪು ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಅಂತ ಅನ್ನ ಬಿಸೋ ಬೆಲೆ ಅನ್ನ ಒಂದಷ್ಟು ಕೊತ್ತರ ಬೆಲೆ ಒಂದು ಸಾಕ್ಷಿ ಕೇಸ್ which would not take for approval by the fact all of the activity going on here we may need money to do so. If we don't budget for it, we won't have anywhere to access funding which has been approved as chairman. Then the stock kids. Um, I think there is a policy of government since the 60s to keep the workforce fixed. To ensure that everybody is fixed because when you exercise you are ready, you are ready to exercise and your productivity increases. So, to make a provision for kids for sports, I believe it's not something out of the out of the law and out of the practice. There was a government in Nigeria that mandated that every worker, every single servant must exercise at least 12 a day and they must exercise day for us. So, we believe uh, sports is extremely important for the welfare of the body of the worker. So we believe that uh, uh, adopted sports is one way uh, that we get our workforce healthy. And that is why in the wisdom of the National Assembly and the draft of the Constitution of Nigeria established a full ministry dedicated for sports. Then sensitization of the ICPC. This ICPC, um, we all know it's important and significant. And it's extremely important that uh, our staff, which are very many, within one industry we have 8,100 staff, and we have so very many in other agencies and the ministry. We believe, we believe that we should sensitize and make everybody to follow the rule and ensure that we remain on that narrow path of truth and justice. Regarding the power improvement, we came and found dilapidated infrastructure all over the country. And what necessitated this was we found ourselves that we are going to have to add another terminal building in Abuja, for example, which is the new terminal standard, and also in Lagos, and also in Kodako, and also in Kano, and also in Inu. But unfortunately for the planners of that project, which didn't start back to us, they did not consider issues like power improvement, because you need more power to run these places, sewer, water, etc., etc. So they just built that kind of building without thinking as to where the power would come from. So we provided a stopgap middle that we, we created an independent power source to power all of these terminals, which we went and advertised and invited bids and get committed through fund uh, to improve and make provision for this power. 